If you had a superpower, what would it be? It's time for Maths with Mr. Thomas. Let's go with chapter two, lesson number two. Proper, improper, and mixed number. So first of all, what is meant by these three words? Can anybody tell me? Ali. Perfect, yeah, these are the three types of fractions that you get. You get proper fractions, you get improper fractions, and you get what's known as a mixed number. So, what is known as a proper fraction? What does that actually mean? Bethany, help us out. Brilliant. A proper fraction is when the numerator is smaller than the denominator. And again, the numerator is the number at the top. The way I remember it is n for north and d for down. So the denominator is at the bottom. So numerator is at the top, denominator is at the bottom. And when the numerator is smaller than the denominator, then that is known as a proper fraction. Rejwan gives an example of a proper fraction. Perfect, one half, good, because the one is smaller than the two. You can see the top is smaller than the bottom, so it's a proper fraction. Euroba gives another one. Brilliant, seven twelfths, so that is another one. The seven is smaller than the twelve, so that's a proper fraction. Deacon, another one. Brilliant, nine twentieths, so the nine is smaller than the twenty. Perfect, it's a proper fraction. Mosma, one more. 50 over 1,000. Perfect. The 50 is smaller than the 1,000, so that is a proper fraction. You can see for each of these, the numerator is smaller than the denominator. They're all proper fractions. What is meant then by an improper fraction? Owen, have you got any ideas? Perfect. Instead of the numerator being smaller than the denominator, the numerator is larger than the denominator. So, Olivia, give us an example of an improper fraction. Brilliant. Three halves or three over two. The top is bigger than the bottom. Disha, another one. Eleven over six. Good. The top is bigger than the bottom. So eleven sixths would be one. Ifra, another one. Brilliant. Seventy-seven over seventy-three. Good. That is also an improper fraction. The top is bigger than the bottom. And let's go for one more. Camille. Brilliant. Four thousand five hundred thirty-three over eighty-two. You can see the top is definitely larger than the bottom. And finally. A mixed number. What is known by a mixed number? What does that actually mean? Well, that is when you have a whole number part and a fraction part. For example, if I was really hungry, I might eat three over two cakes, three half cakes. But I wouldn't probably say three halves. What I would say is one and a half. So I eat one and a half cakes. So there's a whole number part, which is the one. That's how many holes whole parts there are, and then there's the half, that is the fraction part. Uh, another example, Marley gives another mixed number. Good, three and five sevenths. That is also a mixed number because there's a whole number part, and then there's the fraction with the five sevenths. Ariana, another one, eight and two elevenths. Good, that is another one because I've got the whole number, which is the eight, and two elevenths would be the fraction part. Perfect. And Mihiba, one more. 22 and 12 over 681. Yes, that very common fraction. Because you've got the whole number part, the 22, and you've got the 12 over the 681. So, that is the three types of fractions that you get. Proper, improper, and mixed number. Let's high five them all. <claps> Woo! So, what we need to do now is we need to be able to change from a mixed number to an improper fraction. So, if we have the likes of one and a half, we can write that as an improper or a top heavy fraction. And the way we do that is we multiply the whole number by the denominator and then add the numerator. And then we keep the denominator as it is. So we multiply the whole number, which is the one, by the denominator. So we do one times two. And then what you do is you add the numerator. So you would then add on the one. And you keep the denominator as it is. So that would be 1 times 2 plus 1 over 2. The 2 is not changing. The denominator is 2 here. The denominator will stay as 2. Work out 1 times 2, which is 2. Add on 1, which gives you 3. So you end up with a fraction 3 over 2. So 1 and a half is the same as 3 over 2. Let's try another one. So 3 and 2 fifths. Once again, if you want to write that as an improper fraction, you do the same thing. So you do the whole number multiplied by the denominator. So you times them together. So 3 times 5. Then what you do is you add the numerator. So you would add this number here at the top. So you add on the 2. 
and you keep the denominator as it is. The denominator this time is 5, so you keep that just there. 3 times 5 is 15, add on the 2 is going to give you 17, so you end up with 17 fifths. So 3 and 2 fifths is the same as 17 over 5. Perfect. And last one, if you have 7 and 5 eighths, writing that as an improper fraction, do the same thing again. So take the whole number and multiply it by the denominator. So 7 times 8, but then add on the numerator. So 7 times 8, and then add the 5. And the denominator this time will be 8. Perfect, because we're keeping that just as it is. It is not changing. So 7 times 8 is 56. Add on the 5 will give you 61. And that will then be 61 over 8. So that will be your answer. And that's how you change from a mixed number to an improper fraction. Example 2 though. Let's say we want to go back the way. Let's say we want to change from an improper fraction to a mixed number. How do you go about doing that? So if you have 9 over 2, so in other words, if you have 9 half pizzas, how would you work out how many whole pizzas you have and what you would have left over? Well, what you do is you divide the numerator by the denominator, so divide the top by the bottom, and work out the quotient, so the whole number part, the answer part, and the remainder. And again, you keep the denominator as it is. So you want to think, if you do 9 divided by 2, well, that's going to give you 4 remainder 1, which means then the 4, the whole number, the quotient, this part will be the whole number in the mixed number. So you'd have 4. And because there's a remainder of 1, that is going to be the numerator. And what's the denominator going to be in this example? 2! Good, because it just stays as it is. So that 9 over 2 is the same as 4 and a half. With 43 over 5, if you divide 43 by 5, Nicole, what do you get? 8 remainder 3. Good, you would end up with 8 remainder 3. So the whole number part would be 8, because there are 8 holes, there are 8 whole parts. And because it's a remainder of 3, that is the numerator. And the denominator, Nicole, is... Perfect, that is 5. So 43 over 5 is the same as 8 and 3 fifths. With 67 over 7, Hattie, how would you go about doing this one? Perfect, you would just divide. So divide the 67 by 7. If you do that, Hattie, what do you end up getting? Good, you get 9 remainder 4. So the 9 is going to be the whole number part. And then for the fraction part, the numerator is the remainder. The remainder of 4, so that is the numerator, that's the number at the top. And the denominator will be, Harry? Good, it's 7. Perfect. And last one, if you have 56 over 8, anybody know what that will be? Well, if you divide 56 by 8, you end up with 7 and a remainder of 0. So really, you get 7 for the whole number part, and for the fraction part, well, you'd have 0 eighths, which is just 0. Don't bother writing that. So, your mixed number will just be 7. However, that's not really a mixed number. It's just a whole number. All I'm doing is just throwing this example in to show you that sometimes you will get a remainder of 0. And if you do, well, it's just going to be a whole number that you get for your answer. So, this technically isn't a mixed number. It's just going to be a whole number. But you sometimes get that. Try some of these questions then in the essential skills in maths book 3, page 20. If you look at exercises 18a and b you will be changing from a mixed number to improper and if you look at exercise 18c and d well you are reversing that as long as you can convert between the different types of fraction you will be fantastic brilliant have a shot at them see how you get on best of luck any problems give me a shout Woo! see ya